Hey, Phil here, Got Memories. So look at what we have here. I have not seen a case like that before with actual um, rope-ish. Uh, and look at this thing. This is a treasure trove. Um, before even the days of zip codes. Let's have a look. Oh my goodness, I hope I don't need a key. <laughs> Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, no. All right. There we go. Let's see that. Look, there's a little vent for breathing, I'm assuming. Um, and there's the contents. But these films here, I have not opened them, so I'm just going to take a look. And they look, they look good, yeah. They're going to need a clean. I'm going to clean them up and um, get them transferred, but they look, they look nice. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, that one's kind of welded shut. Sometimes they're a little difficult to open because they're rusted a little bit, but yeah, this is, uh, that's good shape. Needs a little, uh, little bath, but um, Good, good, good. And the first thing that you do when you open up, you know, if you find these films and you open up and then you get this waft of, if it's bad, you get a massive waft of just vinegar and just, yeah, it's not, it's very potent. Um, and it will clean your sinuses out. Um, whoopsie. Whoa. Careful with that. I think I'm going to go ahead and set the weight balance there. But anyway, there we go. Some good, uh, good film there. So, okay, now I've got the films out. I'm going to give them a clean using Film Renew. And it's in a spray bottle here and a lint-free cloth. And what I do when I'm cleaning film, I mean, everything's by hand. I do have a, an automatic, <coughs> automatic film cleaner that Tobin made and it's kind of a weird contraption and I've never really found it handy and but this doing it by hand a two pass um hand clean you know basically you spray the cloth and then you uh you know wrap the cloth and give it some pressure and then uh but I just did a quick test um so this is the original reel you have to rewind it and then now it's the wrong way, but it, and then you flip the reels around. I'll show you in a bit. And um, then you do another pass, but you can see, see that the darker as opposed to the lighter, that's what I clean just as a test to see what kind of state it's in. So um, yeah, and then I've got um, a Tobin cinema system uh, transfer machine. So there's a camera built in here and then you've got the gate and everything. And then film counter, you've got your exposure settings and everything. And then I've also got it running through the computer here. Um, so that'll be capturing. And um, yeah, so that's that. Let's get to the cleaning. Okay, so I have switched the reels. I've, I've taken it off of the main reel here, wound it onto this reel flipped them around this is what you have to do and it's very if you're not following yes welcome to my world um but here we go film renew film cleaner i'm going to put it on a clean part of the rag so now the film is is uh, upside down basically and i've looped it on now it's going to be the correct way going on here so you just hold the uh you just pinch it with the cloth and then run it along with a decent amount of pressure. And I'm just going to show you what's coming off this film here. That, I don't know if that's showing, there we go. That is what's coming off that film. Just on that small amount of film right there is um, pretty filthy. Um, so I'm going to spray it and carry on. And... And as you go, what I do is I'm putting a good amount of pressure on it. I'm also checking the splices as well, because if they hold, they're good. Otherwise, if they come apart, they're gonna, it's gonna go to pieces. 
and I got to re-splice everything. So what I do, ah, and there it goes. Okay, welcome to the world of fun part of film. Yeah, it's broken, so that's got to be re-spliced before I can continue with anything. So uh, I'll be back in a few secs. Okay, I've got that spliced, and I'm gonna, I can see sprock caught again. What's happening here is there's sprocket damage, and it's catching on the rag. So, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's damage of the sprockets, torn sprockets. There's another break there. Um, and this is what happens when you run this through a projector. So, yeah, it's just catching. So I've got to do this bit very carefully. But, yeah, it's... it's uh, I gotta be careful with that. And that's why I do not recommend to put anything at all through a projector, especially 16 millimeter, because people are guinea pigging with their home movies, the one copy and it's caught again. Um, and it makes everything harder. And that's what I do here. When it starts to get a bit dry, I just move it with my thumb, move on to a different part of the rag and spray it. And you've got to watch out because if the air's really dry like it is in Arizona, if I do this, ooh, um, electric shocks every single time. There we go. There's a, some leader tape. Ah, oh, some more snagging. And there we go. Look at that. From that film right there. So that's uh, a success somewhat, but this doesn't have leader tape on it. So where it has to travel through all of this here and come out the other end. This takes time, so you're gonna miss part of the footage. So I've gotta splice some leader tape onto the front end of this so it doesn't, I don't miss any footage. Okay, so I've put leader tape on it. Okay, make sure you've got the holes on the correct way. If you need leader tape, again, Urbanski film, you can buy it uh, by the roll. And uh, yeah, much required because it's gonna have to travel through all this to come out the other side. So popping the reel on and uh, turning it on there. We've got a nice clean gate uh, and you need compressed air like a mofo and also a little uh, toothpick floss thing to clean out the gate and Give that a little clean on both sides. And a little, a little blow job. <laughs> um, and uh, there you go. Gotta watch out for your finger here because there is a fan, cooling fan for the LED, which is cool to the touch here. Um, shut the gate. And then you en engage it. Got it turned on, you've got it on still, silent. Exposure's kind of mid-range, but I'm gonna leave that for a second till I get the... See, it goes all the way through, pop that, and there we go. So, really nice, actually, really nice clean image here. So, the frame is down, I gotta get the framer up. There we go, boom. So it's in frame. I'm a little concerned about the, the little bit of, uh, oh God. See, this is what it's. You go, oh, how much do you charge? Oh my God, this is a pain in the, all a pain in the ass. I never know what people are giving me. And I'm probably in the shop right now, but. Okay. So I've got everything ready to go here. And I've got it on the screen as well. And if I turn the uh, exposure down, it's halfway through a frame right now, but there's a good exposure setting right there. You can see it right there. And then I'm just gonna start to record right now. And uh, that's going. Um, Sometimes I will back it up on a on a DVD through here, so I'm just going to hit record on here. Um, it's going to show up on the screen there. It was just as a backup, just in case. Just what have you got two copies of it? Okay, so got that ready to go. I've disengaged it. Everything's recording, 
and here we go. See that jumping right there, that sprocket damage. And we'll loop that around. Come on, come on, get the exposure up. Watching it. See, the thing is, I don't know where any of this film has been, how many times it's been ran. Come on, catch. There we go, the frame is going. Everything's off. Yeah, you've got to be really quick with it. Why isn't this catching? Here we go, this is going to whack it, potentially. Frame is off again. There we go, adjusting. I'm just gonna let this, for some reason this, I didn't get this looped in right, so it's just spinning. And the thing is, if this catches, and all of a sudden connects, it's gonna pull and it might break the film. And then I've gotta re-splice and all that stuff. So, but when this is going, I am watching this the whole time and adjusting, see the frame rates off here, see the, there you go, it's back to normal now. There's a C-130, no C-130, that's a the, um, DC, DC-8. Uh, and it's backwards as well. So when they shot this or loaded it on the film, they've loaded it backwards and everything's backwards. It needs to be inverted. So when I edit this, look at this, it's all backwards. Oh, I might just turn this around, redo it again. And also the frame rate is fast, which I don't like. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna retransfer it on this unit because it does run at a slower, can run at a slower frame rate. Um, and you might be seeing a crappy image right here because of the fresh refresh rate but everything's right here. Okay, that reel has ended, so I'm gonna stop the capture and then I can trim to where the last frame is. Pretty much there. And then also the front end where I started. So, Boom, there we go. And then save it. And then there is a little trick with inverting it, flipping it. Um, so I've got the file right here. You can go that quickly through it. So where it's got the sign backwards because 16 millimeter film has got holes on both sides while well, if it's silent. So if it's been put on the reel backwards, which it was originally curled you know put on the way it would i put it on and it's been put there backwards for like 80 years um but with quicktime player you should be able to do yippee i love quicktime player it's great it's the best it's a it's on mac but you can get free download on pc but you can do all these different you know basic editing things trimming uh, remove audio, split and clips, clip alignments, da, da 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 adding different files to it. It's like, there's no rendering time at all, but watch this. So, as I have got that right there, I am gonna do a horizontal flip. Boop. Pretty nifty. And there you go. And then all you do is you just save it is a uh, another file i'm just going to call it dash one actually this was called two so and then leave it alone and it will start to save the file 10 seconds i mean it's really quick um and then you have a a completely flip file right here done and it does come through as an mov which is all mac based but you can change it to mp4 just highlight it in the mp4 
and then just tap it and it will go do you want to change it use mp4 as extension and then you've got it right there and then everything is flipped the correct way i am gonna redo this this reel because i'm not happy with the frame rate it's running too fast the way that they've recorded it um it's not matching up with this particular Tobin, but that one runs at a lower frame rate. So it's gonna be a bit more natural speed, but it's still really good. You know, a little overexposed, what have you, but um, yeah, comes out good. So see, look, they're going at regular speeds there. There, they're walking a bit fast. I'm a stickler for this stuff. So, all right. Okay, so I've got the uh, other 16 mil Tobin with the slower frame rate. So this particular one is 15 frames per second and 24. And then this one is 20 and 24. Now give or take uh, 16 mil, originally around about 17, 16 and change frames per second. I know there's a few trolls that are probably like, no, it wasn't, it was 16, you know, whatever. Okay, so uh, this particular one, sometimes it was shot in different frame rates, but um, this one here, I'm seeing it's running a bit fast. So I'm gonna do it, redo it on this one here. And you can just from the, here, the, the sound of the motor um, from the other one, turn it on you can hear it. it's running a little bit slower um, so I'm gonna engage it I'm gonna feed it and get it set to go there we go all right so I'm gonna set the framer oh, where are we there we go See, there's the bottom of the frame right there. That's all the way down. Okay, so got it ready to go. I'm gonna set the software, 16. So we've got this ready to rock and roll. And I've got this all set to go. So I'm just gonna start the capture there and get this rolling and there we go balls excuse my French all right stop it see look now it's engaged and the frame is on so bet the frame are back all right brighten this up get this back here Okay. There we go. It's engaged. There we go. It's going. Woo! Yeah, a lot of work. It's lots of different things going on. So for you guys that think this is straightforward, I mean it isn't really it's a pain in the ass but it's you know what you're doing and I know what I'm doing so for you guys that have done it is uh, so I'm not really happy about that either I'll start to go through these bad splices I'm recording this now, but I'm probably going to have to do it a third time. So I'm not happy with it. I'm not happy with this slow frame as well. Okay, here I have the final directory of all of the reels. There's nine reels. Now, each of them have numbers, and they are uh, labeled as such. 
So I'm going to translate that into the file name and you can rename it yourself if you wanted to. But, but seeing as they do match up with the content, you can just call it whatever you want and rename it, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, and then you've got the file ready to go and you can just whiz through it that quickly through the uh, final bit of footage here. No more projectors required. No more fiddling around with all of that stuff. And these files are all MPEG-4, so it's compatible with PC, Mac, cell phones, tablets. Um, if you want to pop them up on YouTube, you can do so. Um, you know, just smart TVs, you can add, cast them to your TV and, um, you know, they'll, they'll play with everything. And if you wanted to edit them um, or put them as, uh, you know, <laughs> real easy to do, like with QuickTime Player, you can just, if you wanted to combine reels, so you just drag it and right here, you know, you can uh, change it. It doesn't alter the original file, but you can uh, move it around. You just save it as a new file here. Boom. If you wanted to trim, if you've got splices within some of the reels, you can split the clips here just with the edit and just go down to split clip. And if they've been spliced the wrong way around, you can just put them the correct way. Find every single splice and just, just chop them up and then move them around. And that's QuickTime Player. It's, it's native on Mac, but it is a free download on PC. And it is great because you don't need all this clunky editing software to do simple edits. Most people just want to edit and, you know, move things around or just get rid of a clip. Um, and you can do that so easily with QuickTime. And there's really no rendering time either. And it's free. So there we go. That's kind of a, a front end to back end of how it all works. Um, and uh, you can tell by the, the videos here, I go through a lot of work to get the best out of it that I can. Um, and, uh, you know, the quality that comes off of these can uh, be really, really good. So, um, you know, it's all, and obviously I'm shooting this off of a screen here, so it's not giving the best um, representation. I'm shooting it with my uh, iPhone. But if you do want to get a quote, um, you can go to gotmemories.com and I do have minimum charges on any projects that I work on. Um, if you are searching around for the cheapest price and you just don't care, you like want, you know, it's it's me versus sending it off to some, you know, legacy box or some chop shop. Like I do not compete with those companies. My the quality, customer service, conscientiousness, everything is just in another solar system compared to all of these companies out there. And unfortunately, great companies are few and far between. And when you've got one copy of your home movies, you know, this stuff, and it's near and dear to you, you really want to be, just have that warm and fuzzy feeling that somebody on the other end cares about it as much as uh, you do. So that is imperative. If you do have somebody in your local area and they're checking all these boxes or another company, and you know, they, they speak the same language basically, um, by all means, you know, go to them. But my goal is here now after 20 years of this business is to create a lot more consumer awareness about this industry because it is something that people don't do every day and have zero clue about. And they're all getting lured in to these Facebook ads from all of these awful, awful companies that are just profit driven and they do not care. They've got algorithms, they're a marketing machine and they're trying to take your money and do absolutely bugger all for it. And you're getting screwed and... and and it, with such precious material. I tell people again and again, 
This type of purchase is like if you were getting LASIK eye surgery or, you know, you got some sort of ailment and you go into a specialized doctor and you're just going, oh, yeah, I want to get my LASIK eye surgery. Let me find the cheapest guy. Also, I don't care about reviews. I just want to spend $4.99 from some serious XM ad that I heard about on the radio. And I'm just going to go like screw everything else. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be four grand. But blah, 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 blah. I just want to get my. Yeah. No, this is the same thing because you've got one copy of it. So some people don't care about their memories. But for those of you that really do and it means something to you and it's all you have, you really have to do your due diligence. And um, yeah, so that's enough of my waffle. All the best to you guys out there. Cheers.